everyone. I'm going to start a new pattern today, so I decided to show you from start to finish how I do it. This is the pattern I'm going to be working on. It's called Candy Cane Snowman from Teresa Kogut. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got my gripper frame and I've got my fabric. I'm using a piece of my own fabric. I have a scrap that I wanted to use up. So we're going to work with that. So the first thing I do is lay my frame on the fabric and I trace the inside. So then I know my work area. So then I'm going to get my light board. Copy right here. I'm going to cover part of this pattern here. What I do is tape the pattern down to the light board. I'll put a link for the light board that I use. I'll put a link um, down in the description. But this is the box here. And you don't have to get this exact one by any means. Um, you can get any one that works for you or in your price range. So I'm going to plug this into my laptop, which I should have done first. a very thin light board. You can see how thin it is. Okay, then I turn it on. Just push the button. So now that I have the outline of this that I did inside, I can center the pattern to that outline so that when I put it on the frame, it's centered. So I can also, I just leave this painter's tape on my light board and reuse it. So you can also tape down your fabric if you want to. I don't always though. So then I'm just going to trace the fabric, trace the design. This is an ultra fine point sharpie. You can use an ink pen. You can use anything you want because it's going to get covered up anyway. So it doesn't really matter. I'm going to try to do this quickly. Almost done. Hang in there with me. Okay, so now on the border of the design, I just do the corners. And I'll show you why. If it's a long line, I'll do a little bit, maybe like a half inch in the center. So that is traced. I'm going to turn that off. Take it off the fabric, off the light board. Sorry. So now I'm going to put it on my gripper frame. And try to center it. I like the gripper frame better than the hoop because it holds it so much tighter. 
and it doesn't come loose. And I made my own gripper frame. I bought the strips um, with the teeth in it. I bought these strips on Etsy. And then the frame is just, um, I think they're called stretcher bars, and I got them at a thrift store. And this one I probably paid 50 cents, 75 cents for. So you're going to work this around and get it as tight as you possibly can. I'm pulling as I do this. And yeah, it hurts your fingers a little bit, but it's so well worth it. And that's super tight. You want it as tight as you can get it. like a drum. Okay, so now I'm going to show you something else. Oh, maybe it's right here. So if you remember, I told you on the, the lines, the border, I didn't draw all the lines. And the reason for that is because as you're pulling this and stretching it, your lines get distorted. So I only do the corners. So then I take this little quilt square here. For anything that's got a good corner on it, and I line it up with those corners, and then I draw my line. And that way I know that I get a straight line. So you can see right here, my corner did not match up. So I'm going to fix that. I couldn't, I had to go with the further one out because of the tree at the bottom. So I'm going to just redraw that corner phone uh, ran out of storage and actually shut off. So what I was telling you when it shut off was um, how I drew these lines here to be straight. So uh, this is what I use. It's just a quilt square. I'll try to find one online on, and I'll link to it um, down below if I can find one, which shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, you don't have to have that exact one, just whatever you have. So now I have my straight lines. You want to make sure that you measure so that it's the same at the top that it is at the bottom and your width and your length. Okay, so the next thing I do is I get the pattern out and she has her colors listed here and on the inside, which I can't show you because it's the actual pattern drawing, it has um, numbers of which threads to use on which section of the pattern. So she uses Weeks Dye Works a lot, and she also has DMC on here. She does have a couple Valdani. So I have lots of Valdani in my stash, and this isn't even all of it. I have bags back here that have many more colors. So what I do is I just pick from what I have. Which I already picked in the video when I didn't realize it wasn't filming. So for the background, she is calling for H211 Navy, which I don't have. I do have a dark blue, but it's not as dark as the Navy. But what I'm going to use is what it looks like it's black. So I think the black will be really good. This is a variegated black, Valdani. I use number 8. Pearl Cotton. This is 0501. So I'm going to use that for the background. And also there's a moon and stars in here which I really can't see. So I'm going to I think I'm going to use an off-white for those so that you can see them better. I may use something more of a gold. I'll think
think about that and look at what I have. So what I do is I just look at what I have. So there's a dark red for the candy cane. There's a brown. And I pulled all these during the other when it, I thought it was filming. There's brown for the trunks. This is a tan I'm going to use for the snowman. I have a black for the buttons and the eyes. And I have a green for the trees and the hat and the scarf. So it's not the exact green. So she called for 0565 and I have 0560. I think it's close enough because I don't run out and buy everything that's on the pattern when I have an enormous amount of threads. So uh, there's no rules on that. You use what you want. If you find that the green doesn't blend, I mean, I mean that it blends too much with the background, then you can pull it out and you can use a lighter green. Just do whatever makes you happy, whatever you, you like. So uh, there are no rules on that. You do not have to follow the pattern exactly. So this is a pattern. I do have a couple in my Etsy shop um, until they're gone. And I probably will not be reordering these, especially at this time of year. So look in my Etsy shop. It's previsandprims.etsy.com. I'll try to remember to put a link down below for my Etsy shop. And um, happy punching. So this is ready to go. I've got my threads. This is what I do. I put them all. I did this little box. In another video I showed this. This is a box that was getting thrown away and I painted it and then I made this to go on top of it. So I gathered the threads that I need for this project. I put them all in here and then I have everything with me um, that's ready. So I've got my tools. Um, my little scissors are over there on the little table. They are, let me grab those. These are my scissors. They are curved, as you can see, so you can get right down to the fabric to snip the ends off. And I'll put a link for those also. Um, they're just little Fiskars 4 inch um, curved scissors. So. I think this is everything. I use an ultra punch. I punch on number one. I usually use the medium tip. And I usually will double my threads just because I want to get better coverage. So um, that's it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. If you have any comments, put them in the comments down below. And let's see if I can put me in here. So there, hey. Um, anyway, have a great holiday and do lots of punching while you're staying home and be safe and healthy. And please give this a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe if you want to see more. And then you'll get, um, if you click the little bell next to the subscribe button, you'll get an email every time I post a new video. So that way you don't miss out. Alright, thank you. Have a great day. Bye.